council approve in the spring. And was is it true that the minister indicated that he didn't he, he had no wish or intention or desire to when he when he made statements about this to make any changes? I'll say in talking to staff that is the understanding I have. Okay. Um, and if they didn't make those changes, we couldn't move forward because that funding wouldn't be available because that would, the, the, the arrangements that are currently in place, they wouldn't, uh, we couldn't break those and still expect funding. Is that fair to say? Any change in the projects already approved um, will require approval by them to change. Okay. And um, just a couple of questions on the, the, the East Bay front. Um, uh, that line that there's been some level of discussion about. So there's money set aside for that? There is approximately, uh, my latest understanding is about $90 million in the, in the uh, waterfront budget for waterfront corporation of three levels of government. Uh, the latest estimates that we have for the cost is in the range of approximately Two hundred and was it always ninety million, million dollars, or did the water from Toronto burn through some money? Was it originally a higher amount? That, that was your last question. So I believe slightly higher, Council, but not much. Thank you, Councillor Mamaliti. Questions. So, this to me is like Groundhog Day. Uh, it's like deja vu. It's like. Councilor Fletcher has seen both movies. We were at this place just a few months ago, weren't we? In the spring, Councilor, when you decided on your final um, recommendation to, met to Metro Lakes, yes. All right, so in the spring, uh, the direction was given by a small majority of Council to move in a different direction, is it not? That's correct. What happened since then? Since then, the staff are working on an agreement, a master agreement with uh, MetroLink. Um, we're probably halfway there in this master agreement. Um, the, our target was to have it complete within uh, a few weeks to a month max. And uh, from a staff perspective, that's where we're game since the spring. Would this have been ready for us? Uh, if if the approach in the spring would have continued, would we have had a proper uh, recommendation by staff on proper transportation in this city, or did or did what happened in the spring take you off your game? I think. Uh, okay, Councillor Councillor Manley, that was your last question. Please ask questions. Related to the motion. I just want to know where one city is. That's what I want to know. And it only deals with a quarter of the city. Right, and we will have that where discussion in the fall. And transit priorities? We were going to have both in there, yes. Okay, so you believe that we... Are you... Do you believe that we actually have a Toronto expansion plan? Sorry, yeah. Do we have, do we have a Toronto yeah, expansion plan for public transit that exists right now? No. No. Have we ever had one? It's independent of 30 year plan that council approved. I don't believe we have. Are the projects contained in the big move? Did they ever get approved by this council? As a package, no. So, has this council ever had a chance to have a transit vision that it's approved? Other than the four or five lines, you know, $8.6 billion, no. For a full 30 year view, no council never made that decision. Do you believe we would be well served to have that 30 year transit vision? Yes. Do you believe part of that transit vision includes the funding mechanism? Yes. Do you believe the City of Toronto, even though we need a regional solution, do you believe the City of Toronto is going to have to contribute in some way towards that transit vision? Most likely. And do you believe that through this motion we are encouraging and supporting your efforts to develop that 30 year transit vision? Particularly the amendments that are going to be moved by the chair. Um, is there anything inconsistent with this motion? It's it's not inconsistent. I don't know if it's necessary, but that's up to council. Okay, but as it stands right now, we don't have a transit expansion plan for the city of Toronto. This council has never endorsed the projects that are currently contained within the big move. We currently are not going to be able to realize our transit expansion goals without a funding strategy. Are those fair statements? 
their fair state. Okay, and what's going to come together in October, we will bring together the transit expansion plan with the funding mechanism, and council for the first time will have an opportunity to really debate a transit vision. Is that a fair statement? That's correct. Thank you. Yet. So how would the city manager respond on how I'm going to rule on your motion? I'm not asking you. No, so ask questions to what we have before us, please. This, that's right, this is before us. So my, my, my uh, amendment that I put forward, so we, we as a council back in February moved a motion. Council has authorized the TTC to enter into discussions with Metrolinks to study the feasibility of extending the TTC Blur Danforth subway line from Kennedy Station to the town center. So that is a direction from our council to our TTC staff. It's, that's correct, it's already is being reviewed. So it's, it's being reviewed. So if we ask, if, if, if it's already being reviewed, then there's, there's really nothing uh, unusual of making sure it's in there. It gives me comfort to know that it's in that report, even though you're already reviewing it. That, to be clear, this was along with a number of other projects that were beyond the $8.6 billion. That's the way we're looking at it today. That's right. And when, when your report comes forward, looking at all transit projects across the city, I'm assuming that as, as staff at TTC make their decision, they'll really say, what is the demand in this part of town or along this line, and what type of transit should it receive, correct? That's correct. And where we have high volume and high demand, I'm assuming you would provide the highest level of transportation capacity, such as a subway. Again, I, I want to emphasize that we're, because this is our first cut at a 30 year outlook, we're focusing on the priority lines as opposed to mode of transit. So if it's in the next five or 10 years, and if we are firm in our decision, that the TTC and transportation planning agree on its subway or its LRT, we'll have that in the report. If there's some debate as to one or the other, we'll just outline the line. And it's for future discussion because it's 25 years out. So when we put mode of transportation aside, because we don't want to say perhaps today whether this line merits a subway, LRT, or bus, or sidewalk, we put that aside. When you look at what line should be serviced first or given uh, priority over the 30 years, that would really be where the most demand is. That's correct. So the principle would we would want the greatest transit benefit for the greatest number of people at the most reasonable cost. And I, and I should add in, in, in your question vein, uh, much like we did in the Shepherd analysis, this October report will include criteria that transportation planning and TTC believe are the driver for prioritization and the lines in 30 years, which would include exactly what you're talking about. So with the motion that I've circulated, for example, if staff were to review that line, they might come back to us and say, this line does not merit an increased level of service because the demand is not there. That could be one option. That could be in, in 2012, yes. That's right. So given the demand that's there now, the numbers that the TTC have, again, it would be reasonable to look at that line, to look at that demand and say, yes, we think this should have more uh, transit or less transit based on its ridership curve. That's correct. Great. Thank you, Madam Chief. Yeah. Operate, maintain. And can sit, will City Council have an opportunity to discuss this issue? Or do we leave the future of our transportation system how it's financed, how it's designed, built, and operated to some other party, and we have no say about that. I think at the end of the day, Councillor, it, it, it's Metrolink's decision. It's the, in effect, it's the province. Okay, I believe we should have an opportunity if, to talk if, about this. If, if, if you want to suggest a, uh, an opinion from Council, then that can always come forward. Right now, they're going to own, as we know, the lines that they are funding 8.6 billion. Uh, we have given input, and the TTC staff have given input and as to what we would recommend, and then it's their final decision. Thank you, Councillor Crisanti. Kennedy Station, Shepherd Avenue. Uh, are you having discussions with the province on how to implement that? Yes, we are, Councillor. Okay. Um, in that motion, it says to for that and two other lines to have early implementation. 
Now, a moment ago, you answered a question uh, from Councillor De Bearmaker about extending the subway in the same uh, in the same corridor, but that uh, motion reads for future feasibility. So, would would I be correct in understanding that what you've been directed to do so far is go get an LRT line built and see if someday that LRT line might be converted to subway? Is that what you understand? That's exactly right, Councillor. I see. Thank you very much. Um, now, you've had a chance to look at uh, the motion circulated by Councillor De Bearmaker. Do you believe that Councillor De Bearmaker is in accord with the motion five that we moved at the February 8th meeting? I, would you take it as the same instruction? I would take it as basically the same instruction, except that it's giving it a, a priority possibly over other ones. So you wouldn't take it as a suggestion to not build the LRT and tell the province we don't want your money and don't issue any contracts, but instead look at building a subway someday? I would say this, Councillor, I would like more clarity if this... You would like more clarity from this Council before we vote on Councillor DeBearmaker's motion? That's correct. Thank you. by the Mets or Am I uh, correct to understand uh, what you said? Or? My understanding from Metrolinx is they are going to digest uh, the City of Toronto's submission in terms of what our priority lines are over the next 30 years, roughly. They'll be very interested in our recommendations on the funding. They will then come up with their recommendations, Councillor, and those recommendations will then go out to the province. And so the bottom line is, they are the forum for us to feed information and rationale for our recommendations. Ultimately, it's a provincial decision. So in other words, uh, they have to say yes, the final thing, but still, it's better that we have our own plan and make our own decision and present that plan to the mentoring. You're right, yes. Okay. Now, uh, I think a councillor Christensen mentioned earlier that the uh, mayor ran on the survey thing and the shepherd survey, but he didn't say shepherd survey, scover survey. So in this council today or tomorrow, we could still make a decision, city decision. I don't know if it will become final decision of Metrolink. For example, Scarborough, we need a better survey by replacing LRT and SRT line and extending even to Shepherd, which requires only half a billion dollars, whereas uh, earlier mayor's uh, survey plan is 2.3 billion, but uh, it doesn't have a LRT on Shepherd. So this LRT line on Shepherd goes all the way to Meadowvale, even to Zoo, if we adopt the one city plan. But it requires only half a billion dollar more to replace the subway SRT. So we could make that kind of decision, and then we could, I don't know, I can use the word negotiate or present to Metrolink. Am I correct to understand that the process? I think you summarized the Councillor, I guess from a staff perspective, and I know definitely from a staff Metrolink's perspective, They've heard the decision. It was made in February. Um, for reconsideration of a specific line now, you're back into what we went through for six or eight months in 2011 and early 2012. And, and my fear, and I'll be very frank about that, is that everything will be held up for that. It's my understanding that you made it, the council made that decision in February and debated the line and the mode of transit then. That's what Metrolinx believes. And we're working on an agreement with Metrolinx right now that's half done based on those lines and that, those modes of transit. I just want to be clear and on record with council that if you do change one of the lines, whether it's today or whether it's October, there's significant cost because of delay and change of mode again, and there's also significant cost of up, upgrading to a higher level of mode of transit. I just want to ensure that I am clear to you on that, because I have to translate what I'm hearing from Metrolinx as to what the repercussions could be. Okay, I have another question, uh, Madam Speaker. 
if uh, this council make uh, whatever decision and coincide with the uh, Metrolink's uh, decision or recommendation, no problem. But uh, there's a conflict and the disagreement. And uh, Metrolink is only arms length organization of provincial government. So if city is not happy with uh, what the decision Metrolink makes, then we could kind of, I don't like to use the word appeal, but we could directly contact the provincial government. This is the better plan than what the Metrolink uh, says, because uh, when city, TTC is the best organization. They've been running for years. They know the needs. They know all the expert knowledge. So we could uh, go to the provincial government and uh, then maybe become a provincial election. That could happen. No, so I, I don't disagree that if, if, if we decided, as a council, you decided that you disagreed with the recommendation from Metrolink back to the province and it didn't match up with our recommendation, no doubt that we could appeal to the province directly, but I, I, I know that the Ministry of Transportation does look to Metrolinx as the their expertise, no different than we look to TTC as our expertise. Thank you very much. With the ridership that it has. <clears throat> okay, Councillor, the, um, the uh, SRT, as you know, as anyone who uses it will know, it's very busy. Uh, that's one of the reasons why um, it's so important that we keep it running and running uh, efficiently. The predicted ridership for the, um, for the subway line were the SRT to be converted into a subway is between 11 and 14,000 passengers uh, per hour, so that would uh, take us pretty much into the ballpark of the subway, yes. Where else is it, what is, what's the, what is, the, where else is it 11 to 14,000 passengers an hour? that has the subway. So could you repeat the question please? Where else is that passenger, that ridership that heavy? Where there is a subway already? Uh, there, there, there are other um, elements, but what I should clarify is that um, we're not saying that that's the number currently on the SRT. What we're saying is on early, um, very early uh, customer number projections, uh, were the Blue and Fort to be extended, that's the best guess of prediction on what the ridership would look like given that customers wouldn't need to interchange. Now clearly, uh, these are early days, that's the reason why I would support having a proper look at this. Uh, we should do a proper evaluation, which is I think what's before us. So, Council has a number of things that we passed, asking the city staff and yourself, the transportation planners, to have a look at a whole number of things when we passed that motion in the spring. Is that what you remember? Yes, there were a number of uh, items that we were asked to look at. My, Quite, yes. my advice to Quite a few. what it's worth would be um, we should let that uh, review take place because clearly these are important decisions. But if we said as a council we want to highlight one line and we want to make sure we've made the right decision on that one, we want to hear your best advice because as the city manager has said, if you're going to change your mind, for God's sake, do it now. Don't do it in May of 2000 and, uh, 13. Would you concur with that? Well, certainly um, we need to, uh, my, my, my view would be we need to have absolute clarity on what it is that Council wants us to look at. Uh, there's been a lot of debate on these issues. Um, obviously, uh, transit officials have lots to do, so we, we don't want to waste time on uh, work that's not needed. We want very clear advice. But we are looking at a line for this discussion that already has 1.8 million billion dollars devoted to it. So it's not an unfunded entity where we're starting from zero. No, we're correct. asking you to review something where there is $1.8 billion and could you review that and see are we spending that money as wisely as we had could have based on what we're now hearing are the ridership numbers and basically you just got into town. Is that not right? <laughs> this is your first big file for us here. That so, was your last question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, one quick question. I thought you were asking me a question. No, I was asking Mr. Backer. Where right now the suggestion was an LRT, where the SRT goes, right? Would the SRT still be able to run during the building of the subway? Uh, Councillor, yes. Uh, I asked the very same question the other day when I became aware that this proposal was being mooted. So I asked my engineers, uh, technically, can we keep the SRT going? Because we had said it needs to uh, shut up in 2015. Um, we probably would need to put a bit of uh, investment in 
uh, nothing substantial, but a bit of investment to just keep it ticking over. But uh, my advice to my engineers is yes, we could keep it going. And just a quick follow-up question: If we were to put an LRT there, how long would it be? How long would the SRT be shut down? The SRT would have to be shut for a period of three, possibly slightly more years, uh, and we would have to run a, an extensive bus replacement service to take the uh, customers. So no disruption to the SRT if we do subway, but a three to four, five-year disruption if we do LRT. If we're shutting it down for an LRT, what do you, do you, have you come up with a figure how much the buses would cost us and things to be running during that time? Um, no, I wouldn't like to say on top of my head what that would cost. What I could say is it would be an extensive busing operation because, as I said earlier, the, um, the SRT is very busy as it is. Um, uh, I think I'd have two concerns. One, the, uh, the bus provision would have to be extensive. And two, uh, the roads are pretty congested around there anyway, so it would actually be quite a difficult, uh, not impossible, but difficult uh, busing operation. Thank you very much. Thank you. See, and, uh, I haven't talked to very many people about what the best plan would be, but the object of uh, improving public transit, of course, is to get cars off the road. And I'm wondering whether anybody's looked at uh, extending the Bloor Subway West into Mississauga because it seems to me that if that occurred, that that would certainly uh, improve the traffic situation in the West End and probably in downtown, because a lot of people from Mississauga and Points West uh, do drive down here, and I uh, just wondered if any consideration had been given to anything like that. I know that there's funding formats have to be worked out, but... Councillor, sorry, I was slightly uh, distracted there. I think if your question was, have we, the TTC, looked at a western extension of the floor line to Mississauga? Um, I, understand, I, I believe the answer is yes. I think it was some time ago. I saw a presentation fairly early in my tenure here that looked at all the various schemes that have been looked at over the years. I couldn't say for absolute certainty, but uh, my recollection is that we did look at that once upon a time, yes. But I'm just wondering if anybody has uh, recently looked at where would we get best value for our money and get the most cars off the road. And it might be that uh, going west might be a better bet than going east. Well, um, I guess where council so minded, councillor, uh, that, could be, that could be fed into a more holistic review. And my only uh, advice would be that the more that it's thrown into that review, the longer it's going to take to do or um, the, the more challenging it will be to look at everything. But I'm certainly an advocate of a holistic review. You tend to get one opportunity to do these things and to do them properly. Thank you. Uh, the Planning and Growth Management Committee recommendation one be deleted and replaced with the following. I'll try and read it quickly. City Council direct the City Manager, Deputy City Manager, Cluster B and Acting Chief Planner, Executive Director of City Planning to report to the September meeting of PNG on the work underway arising from the decisions of City Council on February 8th and March 21st this year, respecting transit related matters, including the development of a Toronto Public Transit Expansion Plan, consultation with uh, the TTC and Metrolinks, review of all transit routes contained within the current official plan, Metrolink's big move, the previous Let's Move plan, and other previous city uh, Toronto Transit Commission and provincial plans, and uh, develop a public consultation strategy for 2012 within each of the community council uh, districts that, to include possible routes, priorities, and financial models, among other things, and that city council direct the city manager, DCM Cluster B, and acting chief planner to report to Planning and Growth Management Committee in the second quarter of 2013 with a proposed citywide transit plan to update the official plan and prioritization of all these lines. So, Madam Speaker, uh, what, what that means is we are now conducting our five-year mandatory official plan review. Uh, now is an appropriate time when we're looking at our employment land strategies, our various growth strategies, uh, to tie that in together with updating our public transit strategies as they're uh, contained within the official plan. So it's timely and appropriate that we take this opportunity uh, to do that. So the official plan should be updated vis-a-vis -vis public transit. The city manager has already been mandated by council to do much of this work. 
but it should not be done in isolation. It should be wrapped back into the official plan. The official plan will be undertaking various types of public consultation this year. It's a good opportunity to finally ask the residents of Toronto what kind of transit system they want. Uh, none of the debates that, that I've experienced over the years here have the residents of Toronto ever been engaged directly in being asked those questions. I can tell you Councillor Ashton, when he was chair of Planning Growth Committee, uh, floated the idea of developing a public transit strategy and have a public consultation strategy. Uh, that was uh, rejected by the then mayor and a few months later Transit City uh, arrived on our, on our doorstep. So I think it's, a, it's appropriate that we take this opportunity to actually engage our residents when we know they are aching for some leadership and some direction and some results on the public transit fund. And we can offer them that opportunity to be engaged. When I hear uh, councillors talking about extending the Bloor Danforth uh, subway east or west or any other number of routes, uh, there is nothing new that I've, there are no new transit ideas that I've heard in the last few weeks. They're all transit ideas that have been found in some document that has been prepared by somebody uh, at the TTC, at the city, at the province, uh, Greater Toronto Services Board, or somewhere else over the last 20 years. So it's timely that we allow staff to bring all of that together and let the professionals come up with a map and a design of a plan and the prior priorities for it. So uh, I would ask you to support this, this motion, which is, I think, very much in order and appropriate that we do update our official plan. Uh, all the other conversations that we're having about how to improve public transit in the city, very important. And they all are geared to the same thing, providing our residents and the employees and visitors within the city the ability to move around better. Because we know that we're failing. We haven't kept up. And it's a once in a generation opportunity that we perhaps have uh, to get this plan right and put it in place to guide this council and future councils on how to proceed. So if we could set aside egos, if we could set aside parochial interests, and let's work together on, a, on one, uh, one document, together with the city manager, with Metro Lakes, with the TTC, embedded in our official plan, and then we will avoid some of the kinds of debates we've had this year because we'll have a document that is the official policy of council and it might be very difficult to, un to undo that policy document once it's done and it should uh, serve us for the 20 or 30 time, uh, year time frame. Councillor Milchin, do you need an extension? Just a brief extension, please. Support it both. Speak to the financial aspect of it. That's not before us. That would be out of order. It's not something that appropriately goes to Planning Growth Committee. Uh, that debate will happen on this floor later this year. That's an important one. But let's get the plan in place. And then, we know it's unfunded because the province's big, uh, big move is unfunded. Our plans are unfunded. Everybody's plans are unfunded. But we need a proper guide map to know where we're going and what we should be asking for. So let's get that in place first before we, uh, and a financing tool as well, marry the two together, and then we know uh, that we truly have transit back on track in this city. Thank you. Um, we do have a question from Councillor Vaughan. I see the motion for a second. There's a, a word there that I just want to understand how it's been used. The motion to just come back on the screen. It, you have it on your desk. I've been, I was looking for it, but my colleague has been talking. So, in the in the uh, first paragraph. No, sorry, under C. Other previous city Toronto Transit Commission provincial plans. When you say previous plans, we have plans and we have approved plans and we have documented announcements. I'm just not trying to understand what previous city plans means. Councillor, I, I've i lost track of everything over the last 30 years. I'm aware of some of them, not all of them. I try to put in as broad a wording as I could. So 
any subway extension, any light rail extension, any busways, anything that that we've contemplated in the last 30, 40, 50 years. Or voted on a council. It would, it would, you know, I, I would say what, what is already being built and has been approved by council is done. Well, approved by city, previously approved by the province, previously approved. But if it's, if it's not actually funded and being built, then maybe we have a, we, we, we have pause for thought. But if it's, if it's funded, if it's part of previous decisions of council that have already been made during this term, that would be a reopening. Uh, but it would be, I guess, a reopening when the city manager or the chief planner or whomever were to bring forward a plan that says, you know what, something that you did before, maybe we should do different. But that's my, my intent simply is to make it clear that uh, we should be looking at you know documents that are 10 years old and 20 years old and 30 years old because uh, you know certain plans that were floated a couple of weeks ago uh, didn't include the westerly extension of the Lord Danforth subway and didn't include perhaps other things uh, with which frankly I'm just I'm not familiar with. I guess I'm wondering if the Queen Street subway at one point was council policy. Is that being really examined? You know, let uh, let our professional staff. I understand the scope of this list. That's all. You know, I, I think our professional staff will use their judgment as to what is uh, a valid uh, proposal to to be considered. So would it be a friendly amendment to say previously approved the city of Toronto Transit Commission is approved the fair word to put in uh, the scope of the bit? If that if that makes you feel more comfortable, and you know, quite honestly, I'm not sure what the impact of that would be. Is I'm not familiar. I'm not familiar with every single decision of the last 30 or 40 or 50 years.